Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. Today we are going to run a test. Lucky for us, we did not have to watch Nathan today. Although he did call me yesterday. There's no school by the way. So he did call me yesterday and said, Grandpa, I thought you were coming over. I said, was I? I had to then go. But now I am back. I would have done this yesterday, but I'll do this today. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to test the sensitivity of the sensor on my control cartridge. Now the ones that are lit up they have no sensors installed at this point and if you take a peek over here there's also these two are lit up that means there are no sensors installed. As you can see I have position one, two, three and four installed that means these lights are off and they are on down at the bottom at the sensor level and again, like I explained before, why do we need this double redundancy? Because I want to make sure that when my light is off, my sensor is actually working. So I could take a very quick peek at my sensors. If this is off and the sensor light is on, it's working. The same thing with these. Now, ultimately, I will have all of them installed. Now, the reason I don't at this point is because I'm still running single-use chips on the other. Uh, I believe it's like five of them. And so I want to use those up before I go ahead and top off, install sensors that I have already calibrated, and then proceed to begin to print as if I had a full cartridge, which I would. Here's a nozzle check I just did. Well, we're going to proceed with printing some monochromes and some color images of some of the negatives that I've been scanning lately. And we're going to wait to see, make sure that one particular light comes on one two three four this one right here this is my gray cartridge located right here okay that one has 25 ml of ink in it and i have calibrated the sensor to trigger around 20 so we'll see we'll see how accurate this turns out to be now the idea is to wait until it turns off here and turns on here at that point I let the print finish I will remove the cartridge after I remove the little defeating device here that will then tell the printer that I have opened the door see we gotta trick it and so I will remove the gray cartridge remove the sensor and weigh it and it should weigh somewhere around 52 53 or even 50 grams somewhere around that borderline measurement that means that's about 18 to 22 ml of ink still left in it so wish me luck let's go ahead and load up some images one at a time because I want to catch this when it does trigger so I'll be right back alrighty the first print has been loaded first image that is we're gonna wait for it to begin to print it's being pulled in and I'm printing a monochrome because I want to basically speed up the use of that gray okay normally you will use grays a lot quicker when you're printing monochrome but it you know in this case it is used for RGB or full color printing as well so don't worry about it um, I'm just trying to experiment here just to see what happens I want this light right here to come on okay so that's what we are waiting for the other lights that are lit on there are no sensors attached to those cartridges that's why they are on by the way since the last time you saw me the printer has been basically not used and it did an agitation before it started to print that starts as a slow piston like movement of the agitating device and then it speeds up and then it goes through a small cleaning cycle it wasn't that big I thought I was gonna trip that sensor but apparently it did not so we're just gonna go ahead and chit chat here while we are waiting for our print to emerge and we'll keep a close eye to this sensor right here so that is where we are at now remember the sensors can be calibrated as I showed on my live stream and earlier the front cap is removable and then there's the light and there's a little tiny screw and basically at the setting that comes from the factory because remember this is not at all intended to be used the way we are using it these are not specifically made for sensing the levels of ink and cartridges no they're for other purposes but we are adapting them for that purpose and so 
through experimentation, we found out that it will trigger around 10 ml left. Now, for some of you, that might be safe enough, not for me. I need a little bit more of a safety net, if you will. So I adjusted the screw to give me a 20 ml sensitivity. In other words, it's not going to trip until I hit about 20 ml worth of ink left. Now, we are getting the uh, print beginning to emerge here. And again, we are keeping an eye on that sensor. Not the sensor itself, but this light right here. So far, I am printing, by the way, on Pro Luster from Canon. This is uh, Precision Colors SE inks for the Pro 1000. I have added OEM Magenta, which I just happen to have. The man that sells these cartridges for us users and charges only $225 when they sell for 300 or less depending where you buy them from or if they're slightly out of date you know you get these for 225 plus I think free shipping anywhere in the USA uh, priority mail by the way which is about $14 so you get that for free and uh, wow it is absolutely neutral I am using the OEM profile for Pro Luster and it is dead on neutral Again, we're looking to make sure, because I don't know how many prints it's going to take to trigger this. And then we'll proceed with the weighing. And I want to catch it on video so that you guys can see what's happening. Hopefully that will happen. Now, if I have to print five of these, that'll tell me, wow, this printer really doesn't use that much ink to print. Okay? We'll see. We'll see how much ink it actually uses. Normally, a letter size, say a standard image, which has a pretty even histogram, that means it's a very middle ground density-wise type image, will use up about 2 ml edge to edge on a letter size size uh, print that's 8.5 by 11. That means total amount of ink, regardless of the printer, it will use about 2 to 2.5 ml of ink. So we figure something like this will use maybe twice that much but again that is global throughout the whole set of 12 colors I am using full application of chrome optimizer by the way this is coming out gorgeous I'm using the not the highest quality but the high quality highest quality is even slower so because it advances very little it overlaps the previous pass with yet another pass and so on and so on and so on and basically you end up with a very very detailed very fine grain if at all image if you're using Q image you're gonna get a pseudo 16-bit uh, look to your images that's what I am using again what it does it a allows a certain level of dithering that simulates 16-bit printing if you have a Mac computer no worries you can print 16-bit directly to it you don't need any tricks uh, Windows, however, will take a 16-bit image and will downgrade it to 8-bit as it is being sent to the driver. But again, by printing on QImage, you actually literally get about the same exact results. And that means if you were going to get a little bit of banding, maybe, or posterization on a sky that has a very, very gradual change of tonality, it will not happen. It may happen with another application when you're printing on Windows. That's why Canon makes that special driver that piggybacks onto the normal driver to simulate that look. And again, it's just simulating it. It's not really creating 16-bit results. It's simulating it. Only, only a Mac can do that. So this is when I was living in Belgium. We went to Paris. I believe this is Notre Dame Cathedral. And I shot it on my... Exacta camera now this this camera is from a family of German cameras that basically sort of broke ground in SLR 35 SLR technology they were the one of the first not the first but one of the first 35 millimeter cameras that were single lens reflex and this is one of the middle the middle um, maybe in the mid 50s model I forget which one it was but I use maybe Tri-X film, so it's kind of grainy, which I do like the little gritty look that it produces. And again, it's very, very popular back in the 70s. We were there in the early 80s, so 
again and I was of course working for the photo lab at the Supreme Allied Headquarters Europe which is part of NATO that's where the Allied commander resides basically he commands from that location and so I worked in the photo lab which meant I had to uh, attain a very high security clearance to be able to work there and that took a while during my wait I had to work at the non-secure area which was uh, basically working for the newspaper we're almost done fellas okay so again this came out gorgeous it did not trigger the light however so we just need to print some more beautiful gosh perfectly neutral too my goodness and the tonality is fantastic there is no gloss differential whatsoever because we are running full application of chroma optimizer so let me head on over there we'll set up another image come right back and we'll just continue until we get that light to trigger okay if you hear a little noise that's the perch pad emptying itself out after it finishes printing because it did not receive there you go you hear it you hear that that's the perch pad emptying itself it's not running a cleaning cycle folks don't be worried about that it needs to do that to make sure that the next print you produce the nozzle plate has not come into contact with wet ink that may have accumulated on that perch unit the perch unit is what seals against the print head when it is not being used it just it just parked itself so now it's waiting for another job oh no it's continuing on also one thing it does it also creates a very tiny um repriming of the print head because during printing it just wants to make darn sure that the next print you don't begin with a print head that may have a little bit of aspirated air in it that's a no-no and so it does that to ensure that you get a perfect second print or subsequent print so let's go ahead and set that up i'll be right back okay it's getting ready for the next print this is going to be a color image scan from an ectocolor negative so this is a 120 roll film scan this is a roll that is actually 120 millimeters wide so it creates a six by six image in this case the format that the camera created i think it's like six by seven something so it's kind of a more rectangular in shape but it's not a full six by nine like some of the cameras were able to produce back in the day so the first maybe three inches is just going to be chroma optimizer because the format of the scan actually does not utilize or fill the whole 13 by 19. now this is an image of uh, villers la ville which is in belgium and it's one of those places it's like an old abbey that has been going many generations of building from the 11th century up to world war ii when it was attacked and basically halfway destroyed also world war one destroyed quite a bit of it so these are basically the ruins of that particular place now, i have not been able to figure out what the heck that noise is okay it doesn't seem to harm anything and it kind of comes and goes as, as like right now it just it just went away so i don't know what's what that noise is there you go it's back one of these days i'm going to open up the lid and see what the heck is going on in there it's beginning to emerge so I have about another, uh, after this one, maybe two more. Hopefully we'll trigger the sensor by then. Tell you what we have been working on, a new method of refilling. This one is basically full, ready to be installed here. The one that I have here, the uh, photo black that I have installed, has, like I said, a single-use chip in it. So I'm waiting for it to use it up, and then I will go ahead and install this one. Because I believe that, and maybe maybe I'm wrong but I think that the single-use chips cannot be disabled so that they run with disabled ink monitoring I think it has to be OEM so this is an OEM chip on this cartridge I have it loaded ready to roll and so that's what we're going to be using now the refilling normally would be done by removing the plug and after you get a light warning that means you have 20 ml left in your cartridge so you can add 60 so you can measure 60 with a syringe and a needle, hold it upright, remove the plug. I would hold it in this slight angle so that that hole is actually at a higher point. And that will, that will save you from having an accidental spillover if you inject too much ink. But if you run maybe 
till you're red or maybe a little bit after that you can probably safely add 55 to 60 ml without having any problems assuming of course that the sensors were correctly calibrated to begin with the method we're going to be using is going to be a direct injection through the exit nozzle okay he's going to come up with a special tip because the nozzle is like a little piston that actually presses and seals so when you open it up you have access to the internal ink chamber so he's going to make a tip that will allow you to press it open and also eject ink laterally so the ink if you insert it or inject it very slowly will have a chance to cascade directly inside the printer that will require a bit of technique from you the user so to me I prefer this method with a plug simply because I'm able to drill these extremely accurately but if you feel that you're not able to do that then the secondary method will be probably the one that you might want to use that way you don't have to you know modify the cartridges in any way shape or form boy I wish I could figure out what that noise is people have told me about that noise a lot of people seem to have it. I really don't know what it is. And again, because this is ectocolor film, the rendition is, is different to what we normally get with a digital camera. There are some plugins that you can sort of simulate the look of certain films of the early film era. It's just something really unique that you have to kind of get used to, the way that ectocolor film looked and rendered colors. Sort of like a how they do the films of Hollywood, that they act a mood they add a mood to the actual film and so if you are in the desert you get kind of a brownish gritty look to the film if you are in a scary horror film and most of the shots are at night or daylight but made to look like it's night everything's going to be bluish you know and very dark and, and scary um, this kind of has a, a, stra a strange little brownish kind of tone to it and again of course you can adjust that in editing of course but I would just go ahead and leave things as be. These films, they each had their own character. Um, many of the other non-Kodak brands also had a very distinct look to them. And people would swear by them or swear at them. So, you know, what can you say? Okay, the noise seems to have gone away, so I don't know what's up. We'll see if it comes back with the next print. I may have to add more paper. It depends how many prints we have to make here. The next one's going to be another monochrome so we'll see if I'm able to use up that gray ink a lot quicker as to when will this be available well after I get done after I get done testing this I'm gonna put it through its spaces um, as soon as I feel that this is reliable and uh, you know ready to be used by most of you who choose to go this route I will go ahead and load the rest of the five and we'll proceed to um, enjoy the system. There goes the noise again. We're almost done. I think the image part is done. It's just applying the rest of the Chrome Optimizer. Like I said, I have quite a bit of space left here. I know this is boring as can be, but I wanted to catch this live. I wanted to make sure that you guys are able to see when that light comes on. Let me move that out of the way. So we're looking for this light right here, the one that is off that should come on sometime alright so let me show you what this looks like make sure you hear that noise it's gonna start pretty soon there you go you heard it so you see that it, it just has this it looks old it looks really old like you're actually looking at an ancient photograph look at all the uh, ivy growing this used to be the abbey and it is now basically the roof is gone the only thing that's holding it is these uh, arches those things last forever architecture wonders those things all right let's go do another one all right so the next one's going to be a black and white and it's a shot of the town of Mons M-O-N-S and it's located in Belgium so that's where I used to live I lived in a very very uh, farm like environment I had a cobblestone street. It was wonderful. It was like living, really living in France, Belgium type atmosphere. I used to hear sheep in the morning, for God's sakes, and chickens. So, we had a canal that went through the whole region, and that canal passed through Mons. And if you stand on my side of the canal at night, 
set up a camera on a tripod you could take some amazing shots and this is a shot of the Mons Cathedral along with other buildings as well and so it, it, it was shot with plus X film which is a lore ASA film ASA as it was known back then now it's ASO uh, it's a finer grain film so it gives you a little bit more detail because there's not so much grain clumping if you will that's the the silver on the film starts to clump up and the higher the speed the more coarse the clumping of the silver granules becomes and so you get that grainy look it was very popular back in the 70s with you know when you went to a rock concert and you saw posters of the the rockers you know Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and all of these people performing black and whites were super gritty and on purpose so I did an earlier version on the 15,000 the XP 15,000 using I believe it was a fine art texture type paper and it came out amazing so we'll see what this printer will do just printing on common um, luster paper I see it emerging as you can hear the noise comes and goes there you go it's back again I don't know I think it's something actually I think it's actually doing something I wish I knew what it was this here is a little diagram of the defeat um, little thingamajig that you create so basically what it does is it blocks the optical sensor because even though it probably will not cause any problems when you get ready to remove a cartridge you need to actually tell the printer that you are opening the door well of course the door is always open and so the printer will not operate with the door open so we defeat that by blocking that optical sensor with I, I'm not, I cannot show you right now but it's located right here and so that blocks it and the printer says oh you close the door let's proceed to print when you're ready to exchange a cartridge you need to open the door right so in order to do that you just pull out the little sensor blocking thingamajig okay and I just made it out of cardboard I painted it black with a marker so that it's nice and opaque you need to block that optical pathway in the sensor when I printed this first it's, it's just amazing when I edited this after I scanned it I scanned it with the um, basically the Epson scanning software for the the Epson Perfection 600 photo 600 and I did not adjust the dynamic range I left it wide in other words I did not have a black I had more of a, of a gray I did not have a white I had more of a very light gray I set the black point and the white point just under the zero and just under 255 in Photoshop but then I exported after I got done editing and dodging and burning like I would have done in the darkroom I exported it out to QImage and this is what I am printing here and I tell you even though it was at night and there's a lot of reflections on the on the water there's a lot of little um, waves if you will little lines and it's very very nice and some some blooming because again this is an old lens uh, the lights across the, the, the canal cost a little bit of blooming kind of a little, like a starburst look to it which really adds to the look by the way really really nice I have a complete range of tones I even see some like cables power cables on the opposite side that happen to pass through a slightly more lit area of the sky yeah they are invisible you're not going to be able to see this on video but it just amazes the heck out of me because I can see it here on print and again this is a much more capable printer than the XP 15000 and even though I was printing with dye inks on a matte type fine art sort of coarse surface paper I saw that as well still no light I have found out that when you calibrate the sensor and you do it while it is attached to a cartridge in the compartment it has to be a cartridge that you have filled with an exact amount of ink in this case I began with 20 ml and as I was playing with the calibration I had to go counterclockwise half a turn half a turn and then I proceeded 
slightly more and more and more until the lights flickered. And at that point, I went back and forth playing with it, back and forth. You got to use one of these little tiny screwdrivers. I got it to the point where if I just kind of touched the cartridge and made it wiggle, the lights would go up and down. So, or on and off. You get what I mean. I may have to go ahead and continue printing and if this is going to take too long, I don't want to make this a horrendously long video. I thought it would trigger it by now. I thought I would use that 5ml extra ink that I have in there by now. Apparently this thing uses very little ink. I'll go ahead and print. I will be recording. I just won't be chatting with you. And I'll put the camera closer to the printer so that we can catch that magic moment when it does trigger it. I'll be talking in the background every once in a while. But anyway, this gives me a chance to finally use this printer as I should be using it daily, creating big prints like this. That's what this baby is made for, folks. If you buy this printer and you think you're just going to look at it every morning and, and, and tell it what a gorgeous girl you are. No, that's the wrong printer. Don't get this printer unless you plan to print almost daily. Print daily. Make beautiful prints. That's what this printer is for. I cannot do that. I have a room full of printers, just like Precision Colors Mike Lee. He has more than I do. And he doesn't get to print every day because, of course, some people can barely generate enough work for just one printer. What makes you think I'm going to be able to do 17? Not at all. All right, let's look at this. It is absolutely majestic. Oh my gosh. I see nothing but a burst of star lines little star spikes on every one of those lines. The detail of the cathedral, the tower of the church. This is a cathedral. There's another church nearby here. And there's some, you know, eateries across there. It's, it was a wonderful place. A beautiful place to live in, I tell you. You cannot beat it. They had, I uh, believe, this. these are um, canal side restaurants or edge restaurants that you could go Again, gorgeous. I unfortunately do not have any day shots. I'm looking for gloss differential. It's not there at all. Everything's nice and even. So, all right, three down. Let's do some more. Okay, I loaded two more black and white images and I just got a low ink warning on my driver. So that means that it is one of these cartridges that has chips that have not been disabled yet. My Photo Magenta, my Cyan, my Photo Gray, my Chrome Optimizer, and my Magenta, my regular Magenta, are all disabled at this point. And the ones that are low now are the PC or Photo Cyan, Gray, regular Gray, Blue, Photo Black, Matte Black, and Red. Now, one of these, here's what happened. One of these cartridges, because I had a chip that was an auto reset chip and I wanted to swap it for a normal OEM chip and I believe it was the red one I'm not sure yet it came up as being low so I loaded it with a full load of ink but it was reporting low on the chip so I'm gonna wait for it to be declared empty reset that and then proceed to continue printing at that point I'm gonna to have to then attach a sensor to it I'm gonna to have to recalibrate a sensor Unfortunately, not all 12 of them are calibrated at this point. I should have done that. So I will have to do that. And then one at a time get them all set up for sensors. Now this shot is a dove. And it was just on the sidewalk next to one of the uh, French buildings in Paris. And again, I just love the architecture. I love the look. So again, I was just walking with my family and I saw this little dove that kept following me. So I took a picture of it. So far I don't hear that noise anymore, so we'll just continue printing. I've been hearing that for like a year now, every once in a while. I don't know what it is. I wish I knew enough about how to actually service these printers as a printer mechanic would, not just me, a photo printer. Photo printers, unless they are really multi-talented, don't know how to deal with the mechanics of printers. So please don't ask me about any of that stuff. I really am very stupid when it comes to the actual mechanical aspect of printers. And here she comes, or he. 
And boy, you can see the uh, back wall. I don't know whether that is bird you know what or not, but it looks like a bunch of little white specks. Maybe it's part of the way the stone looks, but there were a lot of pigeons, so you never know. It could be that. I have another print uh, coming uh, simultaneously, so we should not hear. We should not hear that, that noise. Normally I print one at a time. I sort of babysit my prints. I never, you know, multi-load paper in the back. That's not something that I, that I think is proper to do with a printer such as this. Although you could get away with it, especially with a simple resin coated paper like this. I would not do that with my art paper because sometimes you may have a jam and you never know. You will ruin some very expensive papers. These run about 50 cents each, so it's not something you know to worry about. Wow, this really came out good. This really came out good. I also did this on uh, Pro Matte Paper from Canon on the XP15000. And that came out relatively nice as well. Again, you're dealing with die printers that when you choose matte, it may end up, I'm not sure, it may end up using its equivalent pigment black ink to help. Okay, Although I would think that that would be triggered when you choose plain paper mode. You would then trigger the use of the, the so-called pigment black that the XP15000 has. Because it comes with two blacks, pigment black and photo black dye ink. Somebody um, got into a little argument with me saying that, oh, you just refilled a Canon cartridge and you're passing it off of the XP15000. Okay, <laughs> it looks that way, but it is not. The XP15000 cartridges look like Canon cartridges. You fill them up through the sponge, just like you do a Pro 10, for instance. I really should be having this out. Let me. Wow, I don't want to. I don't want to mess anything up. There you go. Should be done pretty quick. We're getting close to the end. Still no light being triggered here. That's quite amazing. One, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, the light is on down here. And as it should be off over here. Alright, so the next print should be queuing up as I speak. It's trying to make that noise. Maybe I didn't cue it up. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I don't think I did. Oh, here we go. We're printing. And it's making the noise. There you go. Isn't that something? Many, 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 many moons ago, um, packaging wasn't as good. I'm not going to say anything else. So if UPS dropped the box where the box of paper recited in, you ended up with a kinked corner. And I do have that in these here. So I have to very carefully undo that. I have a stack of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes of 50 sheets each. It is same processing and then printing. Is doing a little cleaning now let me tell you why this is happening let me tell you why we have printed now this is for the incredulous group out there that may not believe this we have printed four images here and they're all relatively large so it created a lot of um, little mini explosions that's how the ink droplets are generated the ink is boiled and so it has to boil and then expands and it is ejected. It doesn't fit internally any longer, so it is ejected like a mini explosion. That may, this is all my theory, that may create some residue in the internal compartments of each one of those little nozzle compartments. So it has to be cleaned off, in other words. And so it will run. That didn't take long. The noise you heard was really the pump working. It wasn't really sucking ink. It just sucks a little ink. It can detect, it is so smart. It can detect when you sucked out enough ink to clear any residue you may have built up. Yes, it does. So at this point, it's beginning to print again and it may not do that for another two to three prints. It depends on how many more we need to, 
uh, go through. Imagine if that did not occur, that buildup, it's like frying eggs and bacon on a pan and you never wash that pan. You just continue building up that residue that you create when you're frying an egg. When you, when you heat up a little bit of butter, you get that brown you know, particles building up on it. If you never wash that pan, you're going to eventually have a nice crusty pan. Well, the same thing here. You don't want to have a nice crusty print head, okay? So that has to be clean, and it will do it. If I was printing 50 of these simultaneously, it would stop. It would stop like every three or four, do a cleaning, proceed to do the next set, and stop again, do a cleaning, and so forth. That doesn't have to occur on Epson because they use cold firing print heads. They do not utilize heat, they utilize pressure. So as you guys are waiting here, probably bored, I want you to take a look here. So you see that this position does not have a sensor attached, and this light is on. This position has a sensor attached, this light is off. This one does not have a sensor attached, this light is on. This one and this one have sensors attached, these two lights are off. We're looking for this one, as I said in the past. Okay, that's the one that has to turn on, on us. The other ones have full loads of ink, okay? After this is done, I'm going to go ahead and jiggle the um, cartridge to see if it triggers the light. Now, this cartridge is, I believe, I don't know if it's the photo gray or the gray. I think this is gray and I think that's photo gray. So one of those will be used quicker, I believe, than the other gray. Same thing happens on a Pro 1. These things are dated. I don't know if everything is the same. Remember there was a fire at Notre Dame Cathedral. This is another shot of one of the um, gigantic medallions, if you want to call them that. Stone carved. And I believe this was also done on Tri-X. So it's going to be nice and grainy, the way I used to like my stuff back in the day. So imagine Say, for instance, I'm using, I don't know, five total ml of ink. So that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And I don't know how many more I have to make, but just, just keep that number in mind. I ran an initial cleaning cycle because the printer had been unused for days since my last little test that I did here. And so... What did that use? I really did not weigh my, my wasting cartridge, but the assumption is what people have come up with is about the same, about 5 ml for a medium cleaning cycle total. Um, and those little mini cleaning cycles are in the fraction of an ml. So I have used a lot more ink, okay, proportionally speaking, to create beautiful prints than I have done to create useless waste. Okay, I don't want to call it useless because it has a purpose. Keep your printer operational and clean running. But it's really useless waste. You're just dumping it inside the cartridge, the wasting cartridge, and not producing anything with it. So, say if I had another 10 images loaded, that would be 10 times 5 ml, but I would have used maybe, maybe 20 ml for waste. The ratio is ridiculously high for our advantage. In other words, most people, believe me, most people that own these printers are wasting four times the amount of ink than they actually use for creating prints because they don't use the printer. Oh, but I don't want to use so much ink. Too bad. You have to use the ink. It's, it's made for that. It's made for that. If you do not, sure, you're going to use basically, realistically, less ink, of course because you might waste 30 ml, say, in a month. Every time you revive it, it goes through a cleaning cycle, and you do a nozzle check, and that's useless, again, except for telling you that the printhead is clean, but it doesn't, you're not gonna hang it on your wall, okay? So, in a month, maybe you print one image, say five ml, but you waste 25 ml of ink, keeping that printer running. Sure, you only use 30. I use 250, maybe today. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow. So I will end up with so many more prints than you will. 
okay now is that important to you maybe yes maybe not to me it's extremely important you hear that is doing that purge folks this is taking forever I'm gonna go ahead and load several more images and we'll just fast forward all of this and if I see it happening then I will slow the tape down to regular speed and you will be able to see the actual triggering okay so we'll be back in a second all right I'm back I tried to jiggle this and nothing happened yet one two three four it's not causing any flickering of the light so we still have too much ink in there so I loaded a color image of Granada Spain after which a amazing song music was actually written way back but anyway we'll see what we get we are already printing we'll reach a point where if I jiggle the cartridge you'll have some effect because that will cause the liquid to move a little bit the levels anyway I know this is boring but you know at least I spent some time with you guys chatting heck a live stream sometimes takes over three hours and you guys still hang in there with me so I do appreciate that but this is very important we need to catch this at the precise moment when it happens because once that happens I'm gonna go ahead and weigh that cartridge and we'll see what we get now I discussed with Mike the probability of something bad happening if you forget to pull that little sensor defeater thingamajig out before you remove a cartridge for either replacement or refilling or whatever you want to do. Um, he told me that he has accidentally done it, so have I, and so far nothing bad happened but he sort of cautioned me, don't get in the habit of doing that. So, what we are getting at is that when a cartridge needs to be serviced, make sure you pull that out first, okay? And that will actually put this window into the cartridge change mode. I use this image for a printing uh, via sublimation on a piece of canvas board, artist canvas board, um, and that came out beautiful. It almost looked like it was made as a painting. When I was sublimating onto canvas I would have to coat that canvas of course with the special coatings required and then after the image was transferred I would let it dry fully and I would then go ahead and apply a coat of gloss over it. Normally paintings receive a varnish, oil paintings receive a varnish coat. I want to make sure that I am watching that, it's emerging. The whole beautiful scene looks like it's lit up and glowing you will love the way this looks goodness gracious now you guys know that I have never visited Spain so this is not my image this is uh, one of my friends produced this and so one of these days before I die I want to go back to my home country my parents and grandparents home country and they say it's a photographic paradise I worked with a doctor a pathologist who took a bicycle vacation in Spain and he was a, a, a amateur photographer that got into digital basically in the mid 90s and he absolutely went bonkers there of course it's a very very tough and really really great shape guy so I know he probably rode his bike for hundreds and hundreds of miles through the whole countryside and he says that everywhere he aimed the camera he got something photogenic yeah wow so I think this is some kind of like a fortress of some sort and of course because it is around dusk um, the lights have come on and everything is just simply glowing pretty majestic looking I am using a ton of chrome optimizer let me tell you folks that bottle right there is filled with chrome optimizer this one is filled with uh, magenta and I got three more cartridges I need to empty onto bottles I'll be able to squirt ink into the smaller bottles that I then use 
to feed my Pro 1, my Pro 10. I got two Pro 1s actually, one Pro 10. And I hope you guys, if you guys watch my live stream this weekend, I did touch on the little 3D printer attachment for you to hold your cartridges for the Pro 10 or the Pro 200 to allow you to have like a third hand and help you in your refilling so that you don't either make mistakes as you are refilling it's very easy to make a mistake with magenta and photo magenta cyan and photo cyan and of course the grays is very easy to sort of put the wrong one in the wrong cart and then you have a problem in your hands so by having it all lined up like that and the actual holder says what the color is supposed to be will allow you to perform the refilling process a lot more confidently okay here we go wow this is just it's just majestic this is a postcard you can see down here the detail of the lit there are lights in this area of evergreens and again you see the top of a tower here so this person must have been at an altitude that was basically at the same level as this whatever that happens to be it's just absolutely gorgeous all right let's go to some more printing but first of all, let me jiggle that cartridge. Nothing still. Wow. It's amazing. At least one thing that you can definitely say about this very long, boring demonstration is that these cartridges are working perfectly. Okay. They have been modified. They have been refilled. They have been disabled. They have been just about everything. I just keep getting a warning for low and I don't know which one of these just popped up as low but when it reaches empty I will have to disable that and then proceed to fill it pretty much immediately whether it has a sensor on it or not I don't think it's the ones with sensor I think it's the ones that I had originally uh, loaded with chips because the ones that are disabled cannot display a low warning they're not displaying anything so I got two more images loaded rather beautiful ones again at, at one time what I was doing was having viewers drop box me some images of their work and then I would proceed to do a video printing their particular images on whatever printer in my army here they chose for me to demonstrate you know their images on print so I would tell them do you want a glossy do you want a luster do you want a matte and which one of my printers would you like me to print your images on for my video and so that's why I have a variety of images from people out there. I should do that one more time. And of course, they all got a big thrill out of being, uh, having the world see their work as well. This one coming up is from a viewer who I haven't seen lately, but he did some amazingly beautiful shots in black and white of flowers in a control environment so meaning either a graduated black background or you know just plain gray or whatever but they are indeed beautiful so I promised that I would print some for him and I did I did it live during one of my live streams and he loved it here we go so the idea being when you have a an image that has a near perfect black is to be able to reproduce that black as dense as you possibly can and again it depends on the printer, it depends on the print engine, depends on the the uh, profile that you use, the paper that you use and so forth. The availability of chroma optimizer on a luster paper like this just kind of enhances the contrast and brilliance of the actual print. One trick if you choose to print images that have a lot of black okay and you're using a Barita paper, barium sulfate coated paper. They are extremely delicate papers and so often what can happen is that some of the surface uh, coating can flake off and so if you print over those loose bits of flaky coating and then later they fall off you will see white spots. What we used to get when we printed in the darkroom with negatives that were not cleaned well prior to printing. 
So make sure that you always wipe. At least get one of these badger and hairbrushes. Go to the, the art supply shop and, and buy one. And just kind of brush gently the surface of that paper. There are some Epson papers, Burrito type papers that I'm not going to mention, that are very fragile and require this, that you do this every time you print prior to printing. So here we go. Three quarters of the image is nothing but blackness. Okay, And the bottom, I believe, has the, uh, the flower. Had a bit of dust. I thought it was a spot. Got to remember, we unless you got a bad pixel on your sensor, we do not get spots on digital images. Boy, Mike told me, you better print a lot of um, images prior to doing your video. I think he's right. I thought 5ml would go like that, but obviously not. We have one more color image after this one. And again, I may, I may go ahead and break this into maybe three different videos. I really hate to do that, but this is basically becoming way too long. I don't know if I even have enough space on my video card. I have to check that. Okay, we're almost there. I will jiggle the um, cartridge when we finish here. This is a lot of black here, and black is composited. Sure, it uses actual black ink as well, but it will use a ton of the gray and other colors to mix together to create. Oh, mix together to create a black. You could tell it's reaching the end when your paper barely advances. I'm thinking we might possibly end up having to do a disabling of a chip. Then I will have to check that cartridge to make sure it is actually either full of ink or it's really, really empty. I hope that does not happen. Usually when you get a low warning you still have about 15 milliliters of ink left. Alright, we're getting close to the end. And then it should load the next image or print immediately. This type of area of high density will generate a lot of heat in that print head, which then equates to generating more residue. It may create a cleaning cycle after this. Wow. Look at that. Just beautiful. There you go. It may or may not. It, it does it because it needs to do it, not because we think it's going to do it. Again, this is an, a smart printer. So it's receiving the job from Kio Image. It just showed that right there. It will proceed to print it. I'll have to check to see how many more pages I have left of paper. Let me jiggle this. Nothing yet, folks. Nothing. Wow. It's truly amazing. So see, it's doing a purge. And I will proceed to print. Now, the Pro 10 tends to print one after the other because I apparently it generates less heat. I don't know what the reason is. Uh, this has to do that. The Pro 1 has to do that as well. I would say if you get something like this puppy right here, um, stay away from printing 4x6s. If you need 4x6s, get a Pro 100, get a, a Pro 200 or a Pro 300, if that's what you really want. If you want to make like photo quality 4x6s, get one of those. Otherwise, get an XP 15000 or the 8320 and knock out your 4x6s with that because every time you run a 4x6 it's going to run a purge afterwards a little tiny recharging of the printhead that's using ink on all the colors all of the 12 channels this printer is meant for creating fine looking prints in other words high level prints not for your mediocre type printing okay so keep that in mind it's just really not very economical to use this printer for little 5x7s unless this is all you got. If this is all you got then you have no choice. I would seriously consider getting maybe an all-in-one printer, maybe one of the uh, expression models from Epson or one of the uh, either a mega tank or a eco tank from Epson and just knock out your small prints with that and then save your big capable printer for your important work. 
This is Breathing Color Rock River Soft Gloss and it is a dual coated paper. It's coated on both sides. The reason it is coated on both sides is to maintain that flatness, okay? That way the paper does not curl in one direction when humidity changes. So it is just amazing. Let me let me aim it this way. The surface is just like a photo from the lab, okay? That's what it looks like to me. I did a series of videos on this paper a while back. It's from Breathing Color, Rock River. Look at this. It's a horse, low tide, out there who knows where. But watch the same image because it is dual coated. The reason they do that is not so you print on both sides, although you can. But there may be a bit of an artifact. Right here, there's a little bit of a, um, it looks like like somebody took a, 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 a very smooth ball of, you know, tipped stylus and went across. So it's like a little roller mark on the coating machine. But it's almost unnoticeable. So you can basically do like a dual sided album that you're going to bind with that particular paper. So many choices out there, I tell you. It's amazing. So here's another shot. I believe this is also from Spain. From the folder from Spain that these uh, this guy uh, sent me, it looks like we're going to be printing here forever, folks. I cannot believe we're getting this much out of just five ml of gray. Of course, I am assuming the sensor is actually working. It should be because it is off there and it's on at the actual sensor itself. I'm going to go ahead and preload some more images. Wow. Yet another gorgeous image. Look at that look. Oh my gosh. And again, this is still in Spain. Now the next image that I loaded is a door. Just a very beautifully painted door. And then I have that image of that lady dressed in customary garb. This is the one that I did on a piece of sublimatable of aluminum and I keep showing you guys that I'm going to do it on print this time and hopefully that will then trigger what we need to achieve here tonight. So my wife told me that dinner is ready and I, I told her I'm still busy and like I said you guys are free to watch this in pieces. But this is the only way to catch this. The only way to check to see how well this will work, how accurate it might be. So we will have to continue, just be patient and continue trying to um, do this as it is intended to be done. This is the one that we want right here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We want that light right there to go on. When that takes place, we will check against the actual sensor, make sure that goes off as well. Isn't this fun? I haven't put this printer to so much work for a very, very long time. And I think it's going to loosen it up, loosen it up internally. Another beautiful place to go to for photographic purposes is my island, Puerto Rico. Because of the Spanish colonization back in the late 1400s, uh, it has areas that are basically kept as if they were during the Spanish uh, control of the island. And uh, a lot of the areas are very historical. And again, where you point the camera doesn't really, doesn't really matter. It's just going to be beautiful. Another place in my bucket that I need to visit before I am gone. Now this is an interesting paint job that they did here the outer part of the building looks to be like a stucco but then the frame the area around the door they painted the stucco blue or cyan if you want to get technical and the door is like an ochre a yellow ochre color that really really looks fantastic in print form so the goal is i don't know whether you can detect this but there's a bunch of yellow exclamation marks those are low then the 
yellow cartridge, no low warning yet. That is pretty much still has enough level on the chip. So we want to get all of those yellow ones to have a red X and then top them all off. Now here's something odd that I just noticed now. Apparently my gray cartridge, my gray cartridge did not have a chip that was empty. Okay, It had a chip that was low. It still shows or, uh, the yellow exclamation mark. But we're going to let the sensor do its job. And again, you can install these sensors anytime you want, even though you may have still chips with high levels of content still available. You can use the sensor because if you calibrate it correctly, as they will come to you, by the way, uh, PC is going to do that for you all. They will come ready to be used and it will detect around 20 ml left. So I'm not too worried about that. I just noticed that my my cartridge actually has a working chip still. And I think in this case the low one is a chroma optimizer. No, I'm wrong. That has been disabled. So many lights, so many indicators. It's hard to keep track. But at least I hope during this whole process you have enjoyed um, seeing these prints emerging. Again, it's like watching paint dry. But again, to us printers, we love doing this. To us, it's, it's extremely exciting to see our images, or someone else's images, for that matter, emerging from our printers. It gives us that kind of a satisfying thrill, if you will. Remember, regardless of what level your chip is in, these sensors are not communicating at all with the printer or your chips or anything else except they are reading for density, internal density in a given compartment. That's what they do. That is really interesting the way they painted this. Another beautiful place to go to photographically is Greece. When I was in Central Europe I didn't get to travel outside of Europe too much. Um, I did make it to England but I really wanted to go to Greece and maybe go down, you know, close, closer to maybe southern Spain, that region there. You need, you need money for all of that, so. Anyway, here it is. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Apparently these are units. That's number five on there. Wow, what a door. And again, like I said, just beautifully framed in color. Alright, I believe we have another one printing here. There goes that little noise again. Let's check our cartridge. Wow. It's not budging at all. It's not moving. If at the end of this it does not, I'm going to go ahead and remove the defeater, remove the cartridge and tilt it just to see what's going on. It should be able to be um, disable. In other words, I should be able to cause it to uh, turn on and off. If not, this whole thing has been moot. When I began, it was at 52 grams. At 5 grams, that's 57 grams. So we want it to be closer to 50. If it's still above, say, 52, then we know that the use of this particular gray is extremely slow. Ah, no, this is the picture, the portrait of the um, Indian lady. Oh my, wow. After I weigh the cartridge, I'll have to determine how much ink was actually used, because I remember what it used to weigh, 57 grams, and then we'll proceed. Maybe on a second video, I don't know. But at least, if nothing, you will see what a fantastic performer the Pro 1000 is. I mean, I have put it through multiple prints here and the output has been flawless. This is using Precision Colors Signature Edition inks, not original inks, except for Chrome Optimizer, yellow, red, and blue. 
those are in OEM form because basically it is just impossible for a third party lab to be able to match the strength of those particular three colors and chrome optimizer third party chrome optimizer is just dismal it barely it barely applies gloss so again it's kind of useless to use you really have to immediately go with OEM chrome optimizer unless of course unless you're printing on fine art non shiny papers matte papers oh my gosh this is lifelike this is ridiculous this is lifelike unreal from now on folks I'm gonna be concentrating on how to how to what how to print I cannot spend all of my time and it's not never-ending amount of time either I have other other um, responsibilities in life let's just say I cannot be spending time helping you with your printer problems I just cannot I get hundreds yes hundreds of emails daily like I'm some kind of tech support guy I am NOT I will teach you how to print I cannot tell you what you're doing wrong unless I'm there with you since you're not giving me the information you should be giving me anyway I have to back and forth back and forth extracting the data that I need to at least be able to sort of help you or at least lead you down the correct road uh, I cannot do that I'd be doing that 12 hours a day and there's no way she would divorce me if I was doing that okay so I cannot be doing that so keep that in mind folks don't get mad at me I originally started doing this to teach you guys how to print to share what I had to learn to share what I was very stubbornly not willing to do and finally after I swallowed my pride I started to produce consistent prints inconsistency in your prints comes to inconsistency in your workflow believe that it is true alright this is the last one we're gonna do because I don't have anything else loaded at the time I'm gonna go ahead and weigh that cartridge and decide whether we want to continue or not again I'll probably do that without any commentary and I will then show you the actual trick the actual tripping of the light and then once that has been established I will go ahead and and just kind of show you what you need to do afterwards in other words if the light was to come on now then I would have to add say 60 ml of, of uh, ink so here she is look at that whoops unbelievable okay just gave me a notice that ink is running low I'm gonna go ahead and remove the door defeater it's gonna switch over to this mode so we're gonna remove this cartridge one two three four you see how it's showing you how to proceed to do the change yeah there's still ink in there let's go ahead and remove the sensor we're gonna weigh this maybe I added too much ink to this cartridge oh boy okay we are at 57 I need to go down to about 50 grams I got a lot more printing to do fellas alright well now that we know we can proceed and print some more I really don't want to extract the ink if I don't have to but that means that let me get an empty cartridge I'll give you guys an idea 31.8 so that's nearly 32 so we can rely on this one to be accurate yeah we are we are over by a good gosh 5 ml so during that time we probably only use 5 ml of ink so what I'm gonna do and I have to apologize for keeping you guys here for so long I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this and then proceed to print more and um, we'll catch that triggering and uh, I will then play it back for you guys and you guys will be able to see it so we're gonna put our finger here 
our thumb on the bottom and we're going to center this bad boy on the right side right about there press you can see the light changing you see that see look at that it is detecting the movement of ink internally so that's what we need happening so we're going to replace that back in place and we'll get ready to print again I will be back in another segment I have to empty this into my computer because I'm running out of recording space and then we'll be back and we'll catch it we'll catch it we'll show you actually triggering so let me insert this back in place again you do that at the hinge down here you have a slot on the right a slot on the left keep an eye on your on the window processing it detects I inserted a gray OEM wow so it thinks that gray is still good because of course it is yellow it has not turned red so that's where we are at at this point all right thank you so much we'll be back I'm not gonna finalize this at this point I'm just gonna add to it so we'll see you in a little bit and then we'll proceed to catch that magical moment thank you so much we'll be back soon bye bye all right we are back from dinner I got a couple more images loaded what I did was I actually extracted a little bit of the ink from the cartridge which apparently I overloaded with more ink than I had planned I wanted to have a 20 ml initial charge that I then used to calibrate my sensor and then I wanted to add 5 ml so I must have added 10 is what I'm getting at so I had far too much ink and apparently that gray ink is not used that much but I have two images that should trigger it we should be able to achieve this finally I tested the sensor with the cartridge held outside and you saw as I tilted it that the light indeed was triggered so I know that is working but again the whole point of this is to have a system that will warn you via a lighting of a light that that cartridge needs ink these are not connected yet so they are on so don't go by those three right there they will fool you the same thing here these two are not connected to the system yet so yeah it notice that I closed the door a little bit you know you cannot print with the door closed very smart printer so we'll see at some point I'm gonna maybe go through three more prints it should trigger for goodness sakes I've kept you guys here far too long you should be able to jump to this section or the section where it actually triggers but I hope you've been enjoying the commentary you know I love to chat with you guys it's always a pleasure to do that beautiful and the colors are amazing what a printer we have here and if we can get this to work consistently and reliable then we have the perfect printer I believe because with this particular set of inks you can still produce amazing results I am using OEM paper I am using OEM profiles I am not using custom-made profiles folks I'm using the OEM profiles to show you guys what a perfect match is had it not been perfect match I would not be able to print those black and whites and have them come out neutral dead neutral so I actually got it down to 52 grams and then I added a few more grams of ink into it we'll see what that does we'll see how many more prints we have to churn through this beauty here to get this light to come on all right so that's another print down look at that you know pareidolia is is it's a weird ef uh, effect that you begin to see things I'm seeing a face right there 
you know, I'm seeing a guy a profile with a beard. Um, amazing. It's, it's just, it's just really, really fantastic that you can make something like this on a basically a prosumer type printer. Let's see, we got another job coming through. And hopefully the light will come on mid-print. Doesn't matter. We just want it to come on. And remember, we were above the threshold by 7 grams. I extracted about maybe that much, and I got it down to 52, and I added a little bit more of that ink in. And to get it above that, that, that so-called 20 ml threshold. Whew. No one told me you needed this much patience when you are experimenting with new ideas and, and, and ways to improve what has already been given to us. I loaded three more images after this one. Gosh, that should do it. That should do it. And imagine if there was, say, a 5 ml error, okay, in the way that the system works. As long as you set your threshold high enough, it will not matter. You just need to be warned. Not after the cartridge runs empty. No, that would not be good. You need to be warned well before the cartridge is dangerously low. So the goal here, like I said already once or twice, is to reach a point where all the chips are disabled and at that point because I'm going to go ahead I think I'm going to stick with the refilling with a syringe and needle I am not going to go the route that Precision Colors at this point wants us to uh, uh, go with and that is really tailored for those of you who feel a little bit worried about drilling a hole in the cartridge I absolutely am not so I will go that route because it's so simple to just remove that plug and add the required amount of ink. When the light comes on on my, my photo black, I will know that I need to add about 55. 55 will get me 5 below the max amount. And so that will be safe enough. At that point, all of the cartridges will be topped off to full and will begin the cycle. I will have to, of course, when I get this gray down to 20. And if it's not 20, I'll have to adjust the amount before I then proceed to calibrate all of the other sensors. Oh, let me show you this. So it's one of these glass buildings. I don't know exactly where this is located. It looks like maybe, is that Canada possibly? I'm not sure. I'm terrible with flags. So there you go, it's a gorgeous image, of course. Maybe it's Australia, who knows. But anyway, look at that. It's kind of a, a very much a abstract representation of what is over here reflecting upon it. It's just glorious, look at that. Again, so sure as can be, I am finally printing some of those beautiful images and putting this puppy to work. We are getting there, I think. Goes to show you, I mean, really, it does, how economical this printer really is, and people are so worried about using it. When you are actually printing, you're barely using ink, almost. You're wasting more ink in cleaning cycles if you do not print often. That's what's happening. That's what. That's why people complain about this printer, because Oh, it's an ink hog. No, it's, it's your fault it's an ink hog because you're not using it. So every time you power it on, it runs a, an extensive cleaning cycle. And you're throwing ink away. Why would you throw and take your wallet with X amount of money in it and every week you just take a few dollars and toss them down the toilet? Thinking that, oh, I'll, I'll still have money in my wallet after the month is over because I'm not spending any money but every week I have to throw away some money because my wallet demands that he wants to remain clean you see what I'm saying of course you can just not print for three months and then just knock on wood that when you restart the printer it will not be fatal okay 
Probably won't be, but you know, you never know. It's a very false economic train of thought to think that if I don't print often, I will save on ink. No, ink is meant to be used. It's not meant to be looked at, okay? So that's what originally I had to understand when I got into this so-called field or hobby. But this is more pictorially oriented. It's more graphical. And so, again, I love the way that the mirrors or the glass sheets, basically, I think it's mirror on that building, just reflecting light out of it. Maybe it's like a two-way type glass. Ah, I know what this is. It's a bunch of leaves, beautiful colored fall-like leaves, and they're all wet too. So the shine and the the blue um, highlights on it. Wow. Wait till you see this one. Man, am I going to have to go and load more images? I know I'm probably going to get yelled at about the first one hour. This better not take another hour. I cannot absolutely cannot do another hour video waiting for this to actually kick in but on the other hand it kind of tells me how economical this printer really is and what a bad rap it gets from people look at the stack of prints I have made I'm still low on a lot of those colors uh, I'm waiting for the red signal to kick in I've been low on those for gosh couple of months at least now the pro one oh yeah that's that's an ink hog that's why it did not last that long I know not too long ago I actually topped off all my cartridges and added chips I got a bunch of low ones already and I haven't done squat on that printer it's just cleaning cycles so you see what I mean I am wasting all that ink because I have not used that printer for whatever the reason okay I just didn't have a project that I could just put it through its spaces and simply put it's not available anymore so it really wouldn't do too much good for other people to have me put out videos about the Pro 1 it would only help those who still have one and hopefully it hasn't been giving them problems so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of prints with it and at least generate some sort of a I don't know monetary gain from it because otherwise it's just going to sit there and collect dust both of them and this one over here is in much better shape than that one that one's on its fourth print hit folks believe it or not one of the print hits literally exploded it hemorrhaged and that that situation snuck up behind me without me noticing too much I started seeing on my uh, so-called Q image perch uh, prints I started seeing puddles of ink magenta ink and I, I thought, okay, you know, it's, a, it's just a little puddle. Oh, no. That puddle became literally a stream of magenta ink. So, luckily, I had a printhead available. And now they're extremely difficult to find. So, I'm afraid that, you know, that's the end of these two printers. At least I have one that's in good condition, supposedly, so far. With very, very little use on it. We should have one more image after this to print. And again, we better be getting close to this uh, threshold we are shooting for. I don't know whether Mike has been able to actually trigger this yet as well. He has been doing it more mechanically than anything. Like I just did earlier where I actually tilted the cart in front of you all. But again, hey, this is fun for me anyway. If you guys were here with me, you could take all these prints home with you. I would give them away as I really don't have any more use to uh, continue collecting prints. I have thousands of them. I mean, there's nothing that I would consider wet. Look at that. Just, just beautiful. These are some really subtle tones on this too. And I can see some good blacks right here and some almost white right here. So there's a lot of tonality here that has to be reproduced by your printer. And some printers may be able to do that and some printers may not. This one of course kicks it out of the ballpark. The magic is going to be when it does trip, I'll cancel the print. And then I will go ahead and weigh it. And we'll figure out at what actual 
point did the sensor trigger and again because you're manually calibrating the sensors they're all going to be slightly different okay there's nothing you know etched in stone about this you want an approximation you want it to be triggered at a certain point give or take okay all right, my driver indication for yellow ink level shows it above 50%. So I got a ton of time left on the yellow channel. That means I cannot really attach the sensor to it as I have not drilled that cartridge yet. Now, on the Pro 200, for you guys that are on the borderline of purchasing one of those and you're wondering, will I be able to refill with it? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, there's always a way, but you have to go through several hoops to be able to achieve this consistently and, you know, get the reliability you hope to have. Uh, the cartridges are not transparent, they're opaque, so you have no idea how that internal sponge is absorbing the ink, because more than likely what you are going to have to do is to let it go empty. You then disable the ink monitoring on that channel, you would then process the cartridge by removing the ball, drilling out the hole so that it can accept a plug, and then adding a certain amount of ink. How do you know how much ink? Because there's no way that you can see the ink level in that liquid chamber. You do not want to overflow it. If you overflow it, it will then plug up the serpentine vent and you'll have a hydraulic lock. Your ink will not be able to flow out by that liquid ink inside the vent okay the vent has to be clear and the only way you can assure yourself that the vent will always remain clear is to never refill to the very top in other words if you overflow you're going to probably fill that vent with liquid ink that will lock it you'll have to literally blow into it with your mouth to clear it you don't want to do that so how are you going to be able to say fill to an eighth of an inch before the top you need transparent cartridges. So your only option is to take some CLI-42s or CLI-8s, process them by flushing them and, and such, and then swap the chips, okay? The yellow cartridge, for instance, that you run till empty and then you disable the chip, you remove that disabled chip, and you pop it onto a cartridge that's a CLI-8 or CLI-42 yellow that has also been flushed. You swap the chips. When you pop that cartridge in after you refilled it, it'll be just as if you had used your original CLI-65. You see how difficult this is gonna be? Okay, it's not gonna be a piece of cake like the, like the Pro 100, folks. You're gonna to have to go through all those hoops. Wow, this is absolutely, which way does this go? This way. Holy cow, look at that, glorious, also very, very sharp, very straight, very controlled, and then when you, ins when you pass the surface, remember the chips are going to be pulled out because it's a reverse helix on that drill bit, that's, what, that's how drills work, they pull the chips out, everybody worries about chips getting inside the printer, well, they can if you're really sloppy, but if you do it carefully, the chips will be pulled out. And then all you have to do at that point is just basically, you got another notice. Hey, you're running out of you're running out of ink. Yeah, I know that. It was just a low warning again, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the the little tricker right here. It goes into replacement mode. You're gonna replace. Remove the gray cartridge, remove the sensor, and we're going to weigh it. Fifty-five. We just have a few more to go, folks. I think we'll do it. I think we'll do it. Let me make sure we have some images loaded. I think this is going to be coming up very very soon notice you see how that light changes wow let me put it back in position 
got to make sure that it is centered along the edges here you can see the light changing look at that you see that so we're very close very close to that time or spot if you will whoops let me make sure that I put this back in we are good to go it recognizes that cartridge the new notice means that I am low on ink let's go load some images this should happen pretty soon alrighty I loaded up a few more I hope I have enough paper left over there to be able to handle that. I might have to open up a new box. I think we'll be good. I got enough for three. Hopefully three will trigger. Three more plus this one. That'll be four more prints. Again, I never expected this to take this long. Mike was correct. He says, it's going to take a ton of time, Jose. <laughs> and I thought, you got to be kidding me. I'll breeze through that bit of gray ink well apparently not world all right gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and as you can see I, I've been getting the low ink warning repeatedly there it is again but yet the whatever the cartridge is that's that's you know producing that low ink warning Nothing has gone really empty yet, so I'm waiting for that to happen. But boy, are we having fun printing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> nah, it's always fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out all the dead spots. I'm going to put ads in between. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'll put ads like every half hour. This has got to earn a little bit of money, right? After all of this effort. And the goal, of course, is... Whoa! Did I just see a light flicker that caught me off guard? Uh, I think I'm printing at uh, normal quality now. Not normal, but high, not the highest. As you can tell, it's, it's printing faster. These are monochromes. These are oh, oh, look, look, look. Did you see that? Right there. Did you see the light come on? It's reaching that point, folks. Let me move the camera close. We'll zoom in and catch that magical moment. There you go. It's flickering. There you go. See that? There you go. Okay. That's it. No. Nope. Not quite yet. Oh, isn't that amazing? Remember, we were about two milliliters away. Okay, so the minute that light stays on constantly is when we will stop. Right now is that that borderline point. This is what Mike told me, that he, he thought it would then uh, flicker. Remember, as ink is being pulled into the system from the cartridge, there's going to be a little bit of turbulence involved. And this is what might be causing that. See, whenever it comes on, it stays on a little bit longer. There you go. Finally, folks, we hit it. We finally hit it. And considering the fact that it was about 55 grams, I forget what it was, uh, we can pretty much say that this is working correctly. Oh, by the way, look at that. We'll do one more and then we'll cancel out. I think this is good enough right here. We'll wait for it to um, get done flickering. We'll go back to me. But I am not going to refill this cartridge at this point. I'm going to use it as my control, okay? Because I still have five sensors I need to calibrate. Now, all of this calibration business that'll be handled at the originator's point. That means Mike is going to do that for you guys. Otherwise, I would have to go to almost 10 ml emptiness, in other words. And I don't want to do that. So, you know, at this point, sure, you can, you can just refill it and be done with it. It's taking longer and longer to flicker off. I think all of these black and whites trigger that a little bit faster. So, you know, assuming, of course, that 
I calibrated all of them correctly using this control cartridge. I should expect them to, ah look, it's almost staying on. I should expect all of these other sensors to react the same manner. I might get away with another print. By the way, I love that semi-gloss. Holy cow, that's beautiful. Beautiful results. These images are fantastic. Uh-oh, it's staying on constantly now. You see that? Oh, it goes off. Let's do one more print. That'll get it down to about maybe 19 grams of ink or 19 ml. And I'm not going to pop that out again just to measure it or weigh it because I know what it weighed just a few, um, not a few minutes, but you know, a while ago. I knew how much ink I had left physically. Gorgeous. Yeah, I still think we need to do one more. I don't know whether I have one more after this one or not. We'll have to wait and see. And it may begin to do that cleaning cycle that it needs to do between several print jobs. It's doing it. If you really want to figure out how much ink is being sent to that wasting, is to install a brand new one, but weigh it prior to installation. And then, as needed, go to your maintenance setup and then set it for replacing the cartridge. Open up the back, take it out, weigh it, and see the difference in weight. That will tell you exactly how much ink has actually been added since the original weight of the empty cartridge was installed. So, as you can see, it's blinking. It's not quite deciding whether, you know, I'm being triggered or not. I think after this one gets printed, it'll stay on constantly. And at that point, this is when you top it off. And so knowing that it will have 20 to slightly less than 20, then you load a syringe with the remaining 60 and remove the cartridge after you remove that little fuller right there. That'll then set the window to tell you that the door is open on the, which is already is, okay, but we have to fool it. And so then you pull out the card, hold it. You will have cables attached to them, so, you know, be careful. Put it on the this position, like this, remove the plug, add the remaining amount of ink. If you are worried, then add a little bit less than required for 80 ml total. So if you have, say, 18, 20, 21, add only 55. So you need a big syringe for that. I would suggest you look for 60 milliliter syringes. I think Precision Colors may have them, but again, you can get them in Amazon. Um, whether they're lure lock or plain tip, it doesn't really matter because the needles will attach to either type of uh, syringe and then proceed to top it off. Put the plug in, pop it back in, and then the light will be off and the next time, again, another light will come on and you can proceed with that one. Notice it's staying on pretty much constantly now. It did turn off for an instant there. All right, so I think this was finally a success. It did what it was supposed to do. And I think we had a great time, regardless of how long it took. So again, you can watch this, binge watch it. If you are an insomniac, you can stay up at night and watch it. If not, just watch it in sections or go directly to the end section and see it actually working. Either way, you will see that this actually does work. Now what I need is all of those low cartridges to go empty on me. Again, one of them I believe is red and it's showing low, but red had a chip that wasn't apparently all the way down to empty. And I refilled it with full load of red and apparently it just wasn't empty. So it was displayed as yellow. All right.
You see that right now? It's still blinking a little bit. Look at look at this. So this was on. There, it's flicking. You see that? It's at that border line. At that border line border border line position. Paper output tray is closed. Oh, do I have another print? Oh, good lord. Let's do it anyway. Let's go ahead. I don't know how many I loaded. I don't know whether I do or not. We'll see. Our light is on. Steady now. So at this point, it's, uh, you know, it is ready to be refilled. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and use that cartridge to calibrate. I'm going to weigh it. And I'm going to add, whether I need to add or not, a little bit of ink. I want it to go below 20 so that I can bring it back up to 20. And then use it as a calibration cartridge for the next five sensors. We'll attach those. You can always remove them. So I'm going to be drilling the cartridges and I'm going to be removing the sensors as needed to process them. Or, I think I have other cartridges. I have a lot of cartridges for this printer that I can use. We'll get this thing going. Once we get it all ironed out and put together, these three lights will be off because those are not connected to sensors yet. You know what? Printing in the slightly less quality, if you, if you want to say that, the lower quality, really does not produce bad results at all. And I see no banding whatsoever, so the Head alignment must be spot on. This is a lot faster also. Okay, this is an image that is not high resolution, so you know forgive me for that, but I found it and it's quite beautiful. Calle de la Al as Las Monas. Oh the street of the monkeys, that's what that's called. Look at that. Las Monas. All right, I think we are finally, yes, finally done. How many prints did we have to make? This is something important for you guys to know. Again, so that the, the I don't want to say whiners out there that complain, but I mean, you know what I mean. The people who have little faith over a Pro 1000's output, um, Economy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, four, twenty-five, twenty-six, thirteen by nineteen, folks. It took that long to use ten ml of gray. And presumably, we know that the grays are used at a higher rate than the actual colored inks. So, I think that's fantastic. All right, Whew. we are done. This is ready to be put into use now. I have full confidence in it now. All right, so thank you so much. Sorry to have kept you for such a long time. But I hope it was somewhat rewarding for you to be able to at least hang out with me for a while and explore what this is going to be like for this particular printer. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and we'll see you the next time. Happy printing, happy refilling, and happy use of what I think is an ultrasonic type liquid level system. Bye-bye, everybody.